Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna discuss which camera is for you. Well, before this uh, video that I have made a lot of videos about why no to each damn company, basically no to Sony, no to Canon, no to Nikon. Now question becomes which is for you? Well, first you have to narrow down what exactly do you need. So before that, you have to understand there are three critical types of camera. Camera type number one, basically hybrid camera. Now these camera can do amazing photography, amazing detail, richness in photography. Basically they are unmatched in photography and they can do video now why newer cameras are called hybrid cameras but not the older ones like older dslr like canon 5d mark ii is simply because back then even though when they can read the full sensor readout and have a full hd output there was so many compromises in them uh, mainly with autofocus uh, exposure control basically you could not change the aperture you could not change the shutter speed all those things that are now being removed then you can say okay this camera can do amazing photographs and can do really good videos so those are classified as hybrid camera. So if video is a need that you only do once in a while, hybrid is for you. So that's what, that's step number one. Step number two, you have video camera. Now video camera is like a black magic or some name. Now these cameras are specifically built for one purpose video only you can see them in their spec sheet when they are describing their sensor they are generally 12 megapixel or 8 megapixel so they are not meant for photography they will not give you the uh, performance of a uh, basically dslr or mirrorless system however in video they are unmatched they can do everything a hybrid can do however they can do it for long inherently the core design benefit of these kind of beasts are because they are designed in such a way they can do long form recording so if let's say you are doing an interview and that interview can stretch on for let's say three hours or four hours or sometimes you see uh, red letter media when they are doing their form uh, like you know video editing and all that they, it like you know they have multiple hours of footage in those sort of scenario these camera can hold their own they can really pull their weight in those sort of scenarios it's, think of it as well let's say there is a cricket match in old days when it used to be 50 50 uh, basically 50 over by 50 over that was a very long recording and you could not stop uh, recording at any moment in time because video was broadcasted live so the video cameras are specifically built for that now let's say you are doing a wedding and you know when the critical events will happen let's say a ring uh, ceremony or a bride and groom case or uh, varmala in case of indian uh, weddings and all that and if you are familiar with that time and you know okay this will happen in this 10 minute window a hybrid camera will give you amazing photo but here's the if you do not know that or for some reason you want to have a whole event recorded and then you want to you know trim out what are the interesting things or what are the bad things in those scenario the hybrid camera will give up basically it's not meant to run multiple hour long it's not meant to that it inherently can do that and it's not like oh sony cannot do that no neither canon neither nikon neither sony uh, basically panasonic nothing can do that. only panasonic sh1 can do that simply because it has a cooling fan built into it so you get the idea like there is a reason for pro handicams are still being sold in the market simply because they have many specific video only features and they can do this for long like basically it's like captain america i can do this all day so your hybrid can do photography all day videography not so long uh, when you have video cameras like Ursa Mini and all that, they can do like all night. Like they are meant to run 24 into 7. Now again, don't push it to that much, but you get the idea. Then we come to the cinema camera. Now here's the cinema camera will give you the highest video quality possible, but they will not give you it for very long. I'm mean, like, why is that? Well, even though movies are three to four hours long, you must have seen a, if you have ever seen any cinema projection, the real sizes are huge. Now you can understand that nobody's gonna have a camera that has like a real size this huge. So what people do generally they'll have quote unquote shots. So each reel would be like only meant for 10 minutes or 20 minutes of recording. So from day one, like from the early days of recording in large film, basically super 35 millimeter films, people are tuned in a such a way that whole uh, cinematography is done in a way where they say take, each take is only few minutes. Like your movie could be three hour long or five hour long in case of Lord of the Rings, but your stocks would be very small, very small. And that carried into digital also. Now, again, uh, many digital cameras have equipments uh, where they can extend their recording time. They may have external server recording where they are like just feed the data into server because nothing can handle that kind of bitrate. You are talking about like in case of a Red Epic, 600 megabytes, capital B per second. That's like your your normal computer SSD would be pushed to the limit. You're gonna need NVMe if you want to do video editing on that. So that's a red effect. And if you're running uh, Alexa uh, high level, high level basically 65 millimeter, you need a freaking server or the flash memory will fill up very quickly. So these cameras, basically like Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, they can do video recording. They can do video recording for long, but they are not meant to do recording as long as Alexa. So uh, not Alexa, Arsa. So why there are everything named after A? So 
these are the best video quality that you can get out of it so if you want re long form recording basically you want to like hey this is my video camera i'm gonna record for as long as i need to go for a video camera if you are like hey i only record i know what i'm gonna do like for uh, my instance i'm recording uh, youtube videos every day for past two years and i know for a fact that my videos will not be longer than 30 minutes or actually it's the camera is forcing me to be like that but you get the idea like i'm comfortable with that okay i'm gonna make sure my videos are like 10 to 15 minutes long or 20 minutes in some scenarios so again okay, i fit myself within the limit and hybrid camera is more than good enough for me i don't need to you know spend money for a cinema camera but again if you are making a cinema movie like full high quality where you want to stretch the projection out to like you know hundreds of inches or say uh, 200 inches you have to have this kind of quality because even a video camera will start to like you'll be like dude it's, it does not hold up like like you can easily say hey it's made on a cheap camera so these are the three types of they have little bit of overlap but not too much so please figure out yourself out like what do you need if you need short term recording hybrid camera is more than enough good enough now if you want short form recording but you have to have the highest quality feasible maybe you are doing green screening maybe you are doing like a lot of vfx work go for a cinema camera and you are doing something that is like a bit of both uh, basically you, you are doing green screening and you want to do recording for a very long time go for a video camera simply because a cinema this sort of camera is not built to run 24 into 7 so three types of camera then we come to the sensor now again this is the part that sees the world so there are also three types type number one is crop sensor which you see from your mobile phone to sony rx100 basically anything smaller than one what is that what does that mean simply means one means 35 millimeter full frame now why does that 35 millimeter full frame has that legacy where it says full frame simply because it has unchanged for 100 years 100 years of legacy is there everything mass production supports it lens manufacturing supports it camera manufacturing supports it so it's a standard basically it's like a meter of the measurement world it's like it's known it's absolute it's unchanging when you come to crop sensor there are two major options that you can choose you have micro four third and you have APS-C now even in APS-C there are uh, two major format let's say you are choosing either uh, let's say Nikon or Sony you're gonna get 1.5x crop 1.5x crop that would be your APS-C but if you are buying Canon system like I have done you would get a Canon APS-C which is 1.6 because Canon was a smaller company at that uh, beginning of a digital era and they did not have the money to like you know form uh, they wanted to save a bit of money on sensor manufacturing they saved by cropping the sensor a little bit and Panasonic comes along and during that time uh, security cameras were using four third system so they are like hey security camera is already there a lot of camera industrial cameras are already there that sensor was already there and because the sensor was so small it is not a heating issue because if you are, if you have to have a longer cable you must increase the voltage otherwise the power will simply not go from point a to point b so for that reason uh, your APS-C sensor will not overheat as much as uh, your uh, basically full frame so that is why you can have uh, 60 frame per second in micro four third but not 60 frame per second in a full frame system and only camera that comes even close is Canon C700 and Panasonic uh, G uh, Panasonic SH1 which has a cooling fan so you can understand that like because 35 millimeter has been unchanged for 100 years it became a standard everything is either below it or above it so this is the one absolute standard. so cropped one which is basically compromise system because it never caught uh, caught on to the same extent as full frame again full frame is 400 years so you have crop sensor then you come to the medium format if uh, medium if like you know bigger is better wouldn't medium format would be better yes absolutely medium format became quote unquote commercial equipment basically if you are seen any playboy uh, magazine where all the photo uh, photography of model is generally done on medium format rolex photography generally done on medium format uh, victoria secrets so there are like a lot of things where are like people will not even uh, dare to show up with a basically full frame system full frame is too small for them so they generally use phase one cameras or specific build digital backs on their old ancient cameras uh, they use that kind of system or they can use uh, something like Fuji GX series now problem with medium format is medium format is a range of formats it's not uh, you Fuji says I'm medium format phase one also says but here's the phase one is almost 10 to 20 percent bigger than this sensor and it also calls it a medium format because medium format simply means bigger than uh, basically 35 millimeter full frame and smaller than large format which was one foot by one foot so anything between these will be classified as uh, basically medium format that is why medium format is no longer as uh, widespread as it used to be at one time uh, Pentax used to make medium format uh, you know Fuji is making now uh, medium format is no longer that wow that it used to be simply because uh, full frame started to catch up so this is the reality of sensors you have three main types crop full frame and medium format medium format has multiple other formats inside it 
So let's say you are a budding photographer and like this is it. You want to be a photographer, you have decided which system is best for you. Well, simplest way I can simply say full frame is the best photography tool right now. Why? One simple way. Full frame have reached a point where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. What does that mean? Because here's the the image quality only matters on one thing, lens. If you have good lens, you're gonna get get great image. Basically, if you don't have good lens, you're dead, flat out. It does not matter, you have medium format. And you can see the basically manifestation of this. I have provided a video down below where you can see Chelsea and Tony, they are like, you know, oh, this is medium format from like, you know, Hasselblad, $40,000 hoo-ha, and like compare that to normal Panasonic, eight, uh, Panasonic, I'm saying Nikon D800, and it's like, yeah, Nikon D800 is better. Why? Because it has better lens selection. So that is the whole reason, like lenses matter more than anything else. If you have good lens, awesome. If you don't have good lens, it does not matter. Like flat out, that's the reality. So what happened? Well, full frame reached a point where because it has been running for 100 years, because uh, the film that you can buy from Kotak could go into Canon, it can go into Nikon, it can go into Pentax, it can go into God knows any hundreds of other companies uh, like, you know, like and things of that nature. Everybody started to make lens that can cover that area so that created a uh, basically self you know like if people wanted lenses they're like i have to buy full frame why because again there are lenses because more full frame sold more people started to make lenses for that then people like hey even more lenses are available so you can understand it's like one hand washing the another it's like more lenses are sold more full frames are sold more lenses are sold more full frames are sold. so it became a complete cycle and this is the reason why even though on sales chart you will see like a uh, cropped body sensors are out selling every full frame put together Together, they are still not moving making as much money to Canon or Nikon as uh, their full frame why because people buy full frame generally they have a much higher tendency of buying more lenses and company makes their money from lenses that's why Canon's red link lenses or Nikon's gold lenses or uh, like you know uh, Sony's G master lenses are generally for full frame system that is why I'm specifically clarifying this is like you need lenses let's say you are a budding architecture uh, basically architecture photography you want to do Yes, dude. The best way to do that, like if you really want to stand out from the crowd, is buy a tilt shift lens. Uh, try that with any any system other than full frame. Good luck with that. Just just good luck. And you might be like, hey, I don't need that. Yes, dude. You may not need it, but other people may need it. And because those people who need it, and they will say, hey, it's all available for full frame. People will uh, like you know, Sony will sell full frame. Nikon will sell full frame. Uh, Canon will sell full frame. And because of looking at that, Sigma will say, hey, more full frames are selling than APS-C system, like in terms of lens buy. So let's make more lenses. Seeing that somebody else will come along, hey, more cheaper full uh, full frame lenses are available than like you know, high end APS-C lens. Let's buy full frame. So you can see it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That is the sole reason. I'm not saying full frame, buy full frame because full frame is better. It's simply best tool at this point because it's reached a point where it's like, hey, I have this amazing drill, but I don't have drill bit that I need. That's the like same with camera. Only in camera it's inverted. Basically, drill bits are your lenses and camera body you throw away. So full frame have largest lens selection in terms of macro lens selection. You don't have like, okay, 90 millimeter one by one. You have 90 millimeter one by one, 90 millimeter one by four, 85 millimeter one by two. Like there are 15 to 16 options in each companies. So that is the reason why people buy full frame. It's simply because you don't have to do a headache too much about it. It's like when you buy APS-C, you have to like, do I have lens selection? Let's say Fuji makes very good APS-C system, but here's the only 27 lenses are available. If those lenses satisfy your need, awesome, enjoy. If they don't satisfy, you don't have any third party option. And not to mention, you don't have any cheaper third party option. So for many people, hey, I don't have the luxury of like, you know, taking out a bank loan or something like that, where I have to like, you know, oh, I have to buy a G Master lens or something. Tamron is like, hey, I can help you. But here's the most Tamron lenses are full frame. Some are there like 18 to 400 millimeter is there for APC, but you get the idea. So full frame is the largest lens selection. That creates a cycle loop system. So it's very loved by pros and very suited by pros. That's like, I can guarantee you go to any sports stadium, basically any Olympic event, any cricket event, I can guarantee you almost everything on the, like, you know, the streamline photography line would be full frame system. It does not matter whether it's from Nikon, Canon or Sony, it will be a full frame system. Unlikely that it will ever be in my uh, medium format simply because the lenses never caught on because again, everybody is making their own medium format and uh, APS-C again, the same problem happened. So cropped sensors do sell a lot, like you know, D3100 uh, sold like a crap uh, lot and uh, D5300 was like a mind-boggling success while uh, Canon series like D500 uh, series was successful, D800 was successful, but they do not sell lenses. Lenses are the main money maker. So this is the reason why I will say for photography, there is 99% uh, of chance that if you buy a full frame system, while selecting the lens, please select the damn lens before you choose. 
you will be happy with uh, basically full frame system do not even think about anything lower than that and it also has another luxury because these are so big and huge you go to a wedding people take you seriously it's like whoa serious thing so full frame for photography then we come to the second aspect it's like what about cinema let's say you want to make a short movie you want to make a movie itself what about that well you have a lot of option if you give up manual uh, basically auto focus now again cinema like people will laugh at you if you go to like uh, uh, alexa and like does it have auto focus it does not have auto like, there is a person whose sole job is focus puller he's like sole job is there will be a knob on side of a lens it's gonna be like okay 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 like his sole dedicated job is just that He's a focus puller. So in those sort of scenario, you can use anything because autofocus is a very complicated system. Sony has nailed it down. Canon has nailed it down. Nikon has nailed it down in DSLR, but their mirrorless is not that good. Like it's not horrible, but it's not that good. Like almost every other company is like that's you have Sony and Canon and you have everything else. So how do people do that? Again, I said 35 millimeter has become a hundred year thing. So people took that 35 millimeter film, instead of taking the photographs that are taken in landscape, somebody made it like this. So it became horizontal. That is why it's called super 35. Now, side effect of that, it became again small because they had to do that. So film loop cannot be, uh, would not become too huge. And not to mention film, uh, the celluloid that you see was already mass produced. So they are like, okay, just package it differently. So that created Super 35 and it was the you know bread and butter for cinema industry for a very long time like almost 100 years even older than that so Super 35 was the king like that's why you will see any camera like uh, C200 uh, Kinefanatic cameras and that's why like crop sensor is not that big of a taboo in uh, basically uh, cinema industry even though Red Epic is only Super 35 so 35 millimeter super 35 basically which is APS-C size bit wider is king so far however recently things have changed the processors become good the sensors for manufacturing became good and large format is making an entry now large format when i say large format i really mean large format i mean large format in a place where uh, even uh, basically red epic is switching and they are now offering large formats which are a bit bigger than full frame then you are going to cameras that is used by uh, christopher nolan who was like you know i'm not going to touch anything other than negative he is also switching to digital uh, it was used in dunker very weird camera i can't recall their exact name then you come to alexa which is 65 millimeter it's like 65 millimeter reborn it's huge like you can put like two full frame into this it's huge now you might be like hey did anybody actually use the movie again dunkirk was one movie uh, then you have avengers uh, infinity war and endgame was shot in this and they say imax camera this is what they are referring to so it's huge you can understand like it's huge and you might be like okay okay only what billion dollar movie does that no joker was also shot on that now, if you are familiar with Joker movie and how awesome it looks, you must have seen there was a scene when uh, Arthur gets uh, beaten up and he's like crawling, uh, like you know, laying on the road. And you see, when camera points out, there is only one foot of focus area and everything else is out of focus. To achieve that, you need great lenses. Now, that is the critical thing. I keep coming back to this point. If you have great lenses, you will get amazing output from anything, even from Super 35. How the heck that's possible? Simply because look at the lens selections. This is a full frame lens. This is a cinema lens from Canon itself, 35mm to 35mm. You can understand the amount of glass they have, the quality of glass they have, the polishing on the glass they have, it's completely different ballgame. Like this will be $1,000, this will be $6,000. So that is why cinema lens, even on a small sensor, they can give you such an amazing system. And if you have cinema lens on granddaddy like this, you will get amazing like Arthur movie. Like I was blown away like how amazing the shallow depth of field in uh, that movie is. Basically, he's on a bus and that is like this. Everything is out of focus. Like everything is like, like that could be the best way to shoot green screen. It's like green screen would be just blur. It's like you don't even have to worry about anything. So you can understand that. Large format is slowly creeping in. Even small companies like uh, Gifinity, they are also releasing their medium uh, large format system, which is basically a full frame. So people are switching to that. And not to mention because uh, RE and other companies like Canon Cine, they have lenses to back it up. They're gonna give you amazing footage. However, Super 35 is more than good enough for a starting point. If you can use manual focus, black magic with a speed booster, with Canon lenses will give you amazing results where you will not longer be like, hey, I want that, like, you know, Joker kind of shadow depth of field. Well, practically speaking, you have only one way. It's like buy a Nikon Z series, buy that knocked lens, which is 0.95. That is the only way you can get that kind of, wow, mind bending kind of shallow depth. Even that will not be shallow enough, but what else can you do? So this is the reality of cinema. It's like cinema lenses are on different ball game. That's why even with a smaller sensor, they give such amazing output. And their cameras are built for one thing only. It's like, hey, give the best possible video output. 600 Mbps per second. Like, that. that's different ballgame. 
so this was my presentation on what camera is for you i hope this clarified some things out of you like what are the sensors what are the camera types and like should have at least figured something out and i will further go down into this rabbit hole and make sure that you can select a perfect camera that is well suited for you uh, in those times, if you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.